Now to this. NBC10 has learned new details about the gunman at the center of this tense standoff. We first told you last night that the suspect was accused of shooting a SEPTA officer and two women. Now police are telling NBC10 they believe he shot a fourth person as well. Police say the suspect killed himself during that standoff. But tonight, his mother is telling NBC10 she has many questions about what happened to her. God, these buffs. This guy has shot four people. And the news story is that the mom has concerns about what happened to her son. My God. And listen, this is this is something you see commonly in the stand, man. Stanians usually don't kill themselves, man. They usually don't take their own lives, man. When they do something, Stanian usually gonna go to prison, man, for the rest of his life or go to prison for twenty years. Other groups that have, you know, kind of like you know, different way of thinking, or different, you know. I put it like this, if this was NBA Live and, you know, everybody had rating different skill sets of, of a hunt, up to 100, so you got dribbling might be a 90, your shooting might be a, a 80, or, you know, what, what not. When it comes to honor, man, the Southern man don't have much honor, man. <laughs> So we, we usually going to go to jail, man. We usually going to, we usually, we can face, we can face people after doing something really egregious, man. <laughs> we don't have a problem walking with our head up high, smiling and giggling in the mug shot after we done did something heinous. And I get that from the, just to give the mom a little bit of, um, you know, try to help you guys understand the mom's thinking a little bit still though man like is we really going to spend this time about the mom whining about she thinks somebody she think the police really killed her son and he didn't he didn't off himself the police really did something to, is that really where we're going with this now to this, NBC10 has learned new details about the gunman at the center of this tense standoff. We first told you last night that the suspect was accused of shooting a SEPTA officer and two women. Now police are telling NBC10 they believe he shot a fourth person as well. Police say the suspect killed himself during that standoff. But tonight, his mother is telling NBC10 she has many questions about what happened to her son. NBC10's Aaron Baskerville is joining us live with her story tonight. Aaron? Jim and Jackie, we did have the chance to talk to the gunman's mother tonight. We talked for about 15 or 20 minutes. Of course, she was upset. She was distraught. She said at some point last night her son was on social media live during all of this chaos. She believes something ticked in his head. Now, this is something that a lot of people outside of the Sun community don't know. Social media is responsible for a bunch of deaths in the sun community and i'm not just talking about the people we see get clapped on facebook live or ig live I'm not just talking about them we see a lot of those i'm talking about disputes that originate on social media that originate on these live streams that end up in homicides later on other groups don't know this because you know <laughs> it's like with everything i mean look going to a fast food restaurant leads to more sun people killing each other than other groups going to a cookout leads to more so everything every activity across the board selling something on facebook marketplace or let go app leads to more sun people killing them everything so Social media is no different. That's basically what I'm saying. Of course. 
he probably was going through something, but that was something within himself. We have a lot of family things as far as sick ones and people passing, and everybody doesn't deal with things the same way. Keisha Jones Hartman is the mother of the 18-year-old who... Keisha Jones Hartman. <laughs> well, where's her heart, man? <laughs> I mean... Your son just shot a bunch of people, man. Where's your heart, man? Hey. Keisha Jones Hartman is the mother of the 18-year-old who police say shot a scepter officer and three others. She claims she hasn't seen Zaim Hartman's body or talked to police since the shootings last night. Investigators say the gunman died from a self-inflicted gunshot, but she doesn't believe that. You believe... In your heart, that police shot and killed him, that he did not kill himself? Hell no. A is she willing to kick up dust and get activists behind her and make a big fuss and stand at a podium and do a whole bunch of other stuff? And I don't, and I, I hope she mentions the victim, her son's victims, even though I'm, put like this. I'm not expecting her to. If she does, that would be great. I'm hoping she does. But, like, some women, they know, they know that some man could do something egregious with most, with a crouching tiger or, <laughs> or saying something, man, or glider. They go off themselves, man. I cannot face my. Son, man, he going to the slam of the plate, dominoes and cards and watch TV and <laughs> join a gang and, you know, be LGBT for the state. <laughs> we don't look at prison the same way other groups look at prison, man. And just from the looks of her, son, Zayn, you look like a pretty rough character, man. Pretty rough character, man. He don't look like um He don't look like he no stranger to the normalities of the stand, especially for people his age. He look like he He look like he was involved in Standing in activities, man. Normal standing for kids this age. A Frankfurt neighborhood remained on lockdown for hours yesterday. Police at first said a gunman shot at two innocent women, ran from officers, and then barricaded himself inside a building. A son, man. <laughs> Not a gun, man. A son, man. Shot two innocent women. Like, they're not saying, like... Uh, what I'm pop slick at him or, you know, looked at him funny. He just shot two innocent women. And listen, man, I don't really think, since we know these are most likely son women that he shot, and we know that they demanded less police. Look at all this drama that's going over two son men, two son Son, sisters getting shot. They def they they demanded the defunding of police. Do you understand how many resources they gotta block this whole street off? They gotta get a chopper overhead. They gotta have k dons. They gotta have um negotiators come try to talk this kid out of the the building. They gotta have um the armed SWAT team on standby. These things cost thousands and thousands of dollars just to get the SWAT team just to give them a call and tell them to get suit up it's ten thousand dollars and that's if they that's not even if they leave if they if it's just like oh sorry false alarm that's ten thousand dollars all these cops was diverting traffic detours Diverting air traffic because you got the chopper overhead. Forensic analyst calls to the scene. 
the dogs, the canine unit, all this stuff. Over two sisters that probably despise cops. And probably call this country racist. And say that the, it probably was talking about if Gabby Petito, when Gabby Petito, when she was in America, don't treat that. Look at all this crap. Because some little son man shot two sisters. Who survived. And this goes on in every city all day long. It goes on all day long. In a city like Philly and New York and D.C., Baltimore, Chicago, Birmingham, Jackson, Jacksonville, Miami, New Orleans. This is all day long. For a bunch of people that claim it. Gabby Petito, they, they care more about her than it. When that almost rarely ever happens, you're getting shot all day long. They're constantly doing, doing, putting all these resources at play for you. A Frankfurt neighborhood remained on lockdown for hours yesterday. Police at first said a gunman shot at two innocent women, ran from officers, and then barricaded himself inside a building. They now believe he shot another man at some point, a 33-year-old, who showed up to the hospital with gunshots to the neck and head. New cell phone video we obtained captured the tense moments. Officers hid behind cars as the gunman shot from a second floor window. Investigators tell us 28-year-old SEPTA officer Irvis Anuzi was shot in the stomach. Photos show the bullet holes inside one of the apartments. I understand what happened, and I'm not taking any of that away. I understand. But... Look at how quickly she glosses over that. I understand what happened, but... but anyway... But So, I'm going to give her credit because she did speak on it. Which I, I, listen, I didn't even think she was going to mention those other people. This is a good one, man. This is an exemplary sister, man. See, all y'all brothers online dogging these sisters, y'all wrong, man. I found a good one, man. She at least mentioned in passing, fleetingly mentioned, the other people that were harmed in this <laughs> incident by her son. Who, of course, forensics and is going to probably find out where that bullet come from. Did it come from his gun or a cop's gun? And they're having a shootout. So even if the cops would have killed them, they were having a shootout. He was shooting at them from the window. They would hide by their car shooting back. So even if they did kill him, they would have been justified. But they're saying, nah, they still, it was the bullet that was found in him was from his gun. That's, and this is what we got on the Supreme Court now. New cell phone video we obtained captured the tense moments. Officers hid behind cars as the gunman shot from a second floor window. Investigators tell us 28-year-old SEPTA officer Irvis Anuzi was shot in the stomach. Photos show the bullet holes inside one of the apartments. I understand what happened, and I'm not taking any of that away. I understand. But that man didn't die. My, my son is never coming back. I got five other kids to take care of and five grandkids. It's not fair. Do you understand that listen, man. <laughs> Let me just say this. Let me just say this. She has five other kids. There are people who get who their only child is killed. There's people who her son and his cohorts have probably killed someone's only child. 
You got five kids left and five grandchildren left. Oh, dang, it just hit me. She's setting up for the GoFundMe. She's setting up for the GoFundMe, man. I just, I, I was trying to be logical. <laughs> I was trying to be logical, but now I just heard. I, I, tell me if you can hear it, the setup for the GoFundMe. I understand what happened, and I'm not taking any of that away. I understand. But that man didn't die. My, my son is never coming back. I got five other kids to take care of and five grandkids. It's not fair. So you heard her right there. Of course, she is emotional. Like you said off the top, she has lots of questions. She tells me that she rushed to the scene last night. She tried to get to her son. She wanted the opportunity to try and talk him down, but she never got that chance. For now, we're live outside of police headquarters. Aaron Baskerville, NBC 10 News. Aaron, thank you. Right, as you mentioned, family very upset. Also, community members rallied and protesting here behind me just a short while ago. But Amir Locke's mom, Karen Wells, very passionate, very angry about the decision not to charge the police officer who shot him. Do any of y'all have the same last name as y'all kids? Any of y'all? Like, listen, full disclosure, me and my mom don't have the same last name. But... Like, you can't find it. Listen, man, especially in stories like these. It's all, they almost always have a different last name than their kid. But Amir Locke's mom, Karen Wells, very passionate, very angry about the decision not to charge the police officer who shot and killed her son. The spirit of my baby is going to hunt you for the rest of your life. Karen some little son teens <laughs> had killed Amir and was still out there, man. Even if they was in custody, she wouldn't have the courage to get up there and say nothing like that. They know, man. <laughs> they know cops, man. They know cops. Is, you can say anything to cops, man. <laughs> you can talk greasy to cops, man. Make sure you subscribe um, to the channel if you haven't, because some of these things, if you're a first time viewer, you might not understand. But you can talk greasy to cops, man. Greasy, greasy, greasy to cops. And they do. They yell at cops. They throw Molotov cocktails through the station. They write graffiti on the station. They yell. They, they dox them. They yell from the highest mountain how terrible people they are. Be smirched. They care. If some other Amirs, because Amir was out there, Amir was a little, Amir was terror. Him and his crew, they were terrorizing the streets of St. Paul and Minneapolis. Um, if some little teens like him had done this to him, she she would she would be like, put the guns down. Come on, y'all, we gotta stop killing each other. We gotta stop all this gun violence. Them little fools don't care. Them little fools might get mad about something she said. Come see her. You know the cops, man. The cops just gotta take it, man. Cops professionals, man. The spirit of my baby is going to hunt you for the rest of your life. Karen Wells, Amir Locke's mother, fired up and angry after learning the Minneapolis police officer who killed her son will not be charged with a crime. I am not disappointed. I am disgusted with the city of Minneapolis. Very disgusted. Wells was in New York City with attorney Ben Crump and Reverend Al Sharpton for a conference when she got word of the decision. She said today she believes racism played a role in Officer Mark Hanneman's shooting lock. So maybe racism, not the gun that her son was pointing at him, but racism. He saw the hand, and you can't even see the hand that's in, in the footage, you can't even see the color of the hand. You just see the gun popping up from out of the. <laughs> Listen, man. I tell you, sisters love this racism thing. They use certain men. They're obsessed with race. 
They use Sunmen as tools, as vehicles to further their racist agenda. The biggest racist in this country are sisters. And they do the, the telltale thing that sun people do when they're guilty of anything. They project. Some people are the biggest projectors on the planet. We always project our vices on other people. That's why we always think anytime something happened, every time somebody say something that that we deem, you know, not not in the best interest of the race. What do we say? That person must have got paid, man. Who they paying him? They paying her to say that. Cause we know man, you could we we you could buy you give us some money we do anything. So they project a lot. The sisters project. They're the biggest racist. They're the biggest racist. Go to any one of these sisters' channels. They despise glider queens, man. Reverend Al Sharpton for a conference when she got word of the decision. She said today she believes racism played a role in Officer Mark Hanneman's shooting lock. So maybe if it was a little lighter, Melanie, maybe they would have gave him a de-escalation stages of a chance to drop the weapon. But you had enough time before my baby went and reached for his weapon. Although not verified, Locke's family says their son had a permit to carry and had the gun he reached for to protect himself from the rising violence in Minneapolis. Well, Here's the thing. This is the same thing that happened with Philando Castile up in Minneapolis. It must be very hard to get verification on these um, CCWs, man, for um, Sunman, because... The only person that ever said of me, um, Philando Castile had a registered gun was his girlfriend, Diamond Jackson, <laughs> who was in the car narrating the whole thing. And the Mia Locke allegedly had a permit gun. And listen, man, she's got Al and Ben Crump. And she still isn't up there. Here go his concealed carry card right here. My baby. She can't, the amount of resources between these two men, they could, they could buy the Rosetta Stone if they wanted. Okay? They got plenty of money and plenty of resources and plenty of connections. And in neither case, either Philando or this case, Amir Locke, has anyone ever produced Concealed carry cop or paperwork from the office that handles that in Minneapolis or any kind of proof that them brothers had concealed weapons. It's just something that some people say. It would be so easy. I mean, so easy for her to just be like, and right here, we have a copy of my son's CCW. But she's not because it's not true. They're lying. And they know that the media can't. If you're if you're a member of the media and you ask her, well, where's the CCW? Where's where's his card? Where's his um <laughs> where's proof that he had a registered gun? Even though it wouldn't matter because even if you have a registered gun, you can't point it at a cop. It but just to like make the the sun masses would you know make it all about that one aspect of the case they ain't even gonna do that because they don't have it it doesn't exist he didn't have it because if he did they would be screaming it from the highest mountain top Although not verified, Locke's family says their son had a permit to carry and had the gun he reached for to protect himself from the rising violence in Minneapolis. Wells using the moment to take a shot at Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry. My son was protecting himself, thinking he had to protect himself from all the crime that is out of control, Mayor Fry, the mayor of Minneapolis. 
that you can't control. Lock was well, sister, let me tell you something. They were trying to control it. That's why they had a um search warrant. Because um that house that your um son was sleeping in with a firearm by his side, there was guys in there who committed a bunch of heinous murders on the streets of Minneapolis who were tied to that address, man. Um who also subsequently arrested <laughs> and charged with those heinous murders that I just mentioned. <laughs> so by going to that house, they were trying to stop the crime, even though this is St. Paul and not Minneapolis, but Minneapolis police and all that stuff. They were trying to get people who are killing people on the streets of Minneapolis. That's literally, unquestionably, without a shadow of a doubt, the reason why they were there when your son pointed the gun at them. My son was protecting himself, thinking he had to protect himself from all the crime that is out of control, Mayor Fry, the mayor of Minneapolis, that you can't control. Locke was killed while SWAT members executed a no-knock warrant. Attorney Ben Crump also going after Fry for claiming that he banned no-knock warrants when he did not. I think when they say they have policies... That they should follow the policies. There shouldn't have been any no-not warrants being executed. Even with today's decision, Karen Wells right. says this isn't over and vowed that she would not just quietly go away. We're coming. We're coming Amen. full force. And I'm not going to stop racing this race and running the race until I cross that finish line. Now, Mayor Fry releasing a statement saying, in part, addressing the challenges in criminal justice and safety requires a shared resolve to continuous change and improvement. That conviction will continue guiding the city of Minneapolis moving forward. Now, it's important to note, Mayor Fry did, in fact, ban no-knock warrants starting this Friday. Instead, police officers will be forced to go with a knock and announce before crossing that threshold. We're live in Minneapolis. Karen Scullin, Fox 9. And late this afternoon, Interim Police Chief Amelia Huffman releasing a statement on today's decision. It says, in part, we recognize the deep loss felt by Amir Locke's family and those who loved and knew him best, as well as the profound grief in our community. Officers never want to face split-second decisions that end in the loss of life. It is vitally important that the department provide the training, equipment, and po uh, policy support necessary for them to carry out their work, mitigating the risks to community members and officers. Thank you.